What is up, guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. I'm John the Potter, so good to have you in my studio today on this beautiful, beautiful summer Minnesota day. What are we doing today? Today, we are gonna throw some cylinders. And why are we gonna throw cylinders? Well, looking back at my videos, I realized that I don't have that many great beginner videos. Like, I do a lot of just whatever I'm doing, which tends to be intermediate to advanced. So we're gonna bring it back. You know, schools are starting, people are gonna be getting into ceramics, and there's just some great reminders for everybody too. Like everybody needs to be able to throw a great cylinder. And even if you ha can throw a great cylinder, you can always work on more consistent, you can more height. So I remember back the first ever project that we had to do when we were in college was to throw 10 cylinders that were 10 inches. 10, that was, it's, it's big. When you're a beginner, getting 10 inches of height is really difficult. We're gonna do a small, a medium, and a large cylinder. And we're gonna try and get as even thickness that we can. And we're gonna cut it in half, we're gonna look at it, we're gonna examine what we can do better. I'm just so excited about this video. I'm so excited about sharing with you. It's been a long time since I've just thrown a straight cylinder, so let's see how it goes, huh? So that's about two, that's a little over two pounds. We're gonna go with one and a half. So that's one and a half pounds. We'll start with that one. And then this is a little over two, and then we're gonna do four. One and a half, two, and four pounds. All right, so for the first, for the first one, the little one, I'm gonna talk through it and just kinda like go through and explain what, I was, what I'm doing. And then for the medium and the large, I'm just gonna play some sweet music and you can just sit back and relax and watch some throwing. Cause who doesn't love a little throwing music video action? First of all, obviously, you wanna start with a ball of clay, right? Well wedged, you wedge to get the clay particles kinda moving so that the clay is not super stiff when you start. Get all the air bubbles out, make sure it's really consistent. Shout out to Continental Clay for all the clay. This is a buff stoneware from them. These bats are from them. These are like a composite wood that work really well. All right, you guys ready for this? We're gonna zoom in a little bit. Oh, no, I missed it. Boom! All right, so you wanna make sure that you got it pretty close to the center. Then you gotta make sure that it's wet, got your hands wet, and then we're gonna center. If you need to watch a centering video, I have one of those too. So when I center, I like to cone up. And coning up just helps to provide that little bit more wedge. Helps to make, we're all about consistency. If I had to use one word to describe what makes a successful potter, I'd say consistency. Okay, so we cone up a little bit, we cone down. I'm gonna cone up and down one more time because this clay seems a little difficult. And now for a cylinder, if we were doing a bowl or a plate or something, I would center way lower, but then we'll center it so that it's fairly high. And this, you know, you kind of go in however you want. Some people go in with their thumbs, some people go in, I just go in with one finger, you can go in with two fingers. So now we're gonna pull up. And so this is where, if you're not trying to throw a cylinder, the clay automatically wants to get spread out, like a bowl or like, a wide top. And so you need to kind of like forcefully keep more pressure on that outside finger than on the inside. And so to get height between here and here is easy, right? It's easy to make this part thin, the top third. The hard part is to get the clay from the base. So the first few pulls, I will always go in like I think about just just slamming that clay in. And sometimes I'll even just like stop right there. So I go in hard, I pull, I'm kind of just pinching pulling up this way. And then I kind of just really lightly do the top. And I'll do it more later, but for the first few pulls, you really want to make sure that you're right there. I'm applying the most pressure. And then I kind of start to apply a little less pressure, a little less, a little less, a little less, a little less. Until I just like really, because it's easy to get the top to be thin. It is, I promise you. 
The hard part is to get that clay up from the bottom. And like I said, the hard part is keeping it really nice and thin. So we wanna make sure that that's what we're focused on. So what did I say? This was one and a half pounds. And then basically that's my habit is to always just use the sponge to smooth out that lip. And now like I can't even fit my hand in there anymore. So this is probably gonna be the last one. Go in and there we go. So, and one thing that you can do that you, that I, I didn't really need to do that with this one, but is to collar it in. And so if you wanna keep it really thin, you can take both hands like this, which I'll show you a different angle of that on a different one. So that thin, really tall, thin shape is one of the hardest things for beginners to do. And so that's why you gotta practice it. There's the first tall cylinder. All right, number two, get that bat surface a little wet, boom, throw it down, close to the center as you can. So once again, if that top starts to get wide, or you just want the whole piece a little thinner, then we're just gonna collar it in a little bit. So basically what I'm doing is just trying to apply even pressure, starting out low and then going high. And then we just close that form in a little bit up top. And that reveals if there was any like a little bit off center. And I feel like with tall pieces like this, there's always one pull that's the most important. And so that was the one where I definitely got the most clay up. All right, I'm gonna do one more pull. So we're gonna try and get as much from there as possible. All right, that's about as good as we are gonna get out of this two, two pounds of clay, about nine inches. Nine and a half. All right, there we go. So that's about 10 inches, probably slightly under 10 inches. But that's with two pounds, so one and a half, two. And now we're gonna do the big honker. Let's try and get like 15 inches. Boom. So now I'm gonna cut this one open and show you what it looks like on the inside and show you how I throw it. So I'm gonna take a wire tool. And if you've never done this before with your pots, I would definitely recommend it. So we're gonna slicer right down the middle and then And then I'll show you the inside like that. Whew. So we have pretty even thickness all the way up and on the bottom, which is good. And so, right, so you wanna push that clay all the way from the bottom. And then this hand on the inside, you can do one finger, you can do this finger, you can do, I mean, I like to do this finger most of the time because I can stick my hand in like this. And then push this one. This one just stays right on the bottom the whole time, applying even consistent pressure. You can start to apply a little less pressure as you get to the top, because remember that top third is really easy to make thin, and most people actually make that part too thin. 
So most beginners have problems with having too much clay down here, too little clay right here, and then the lip is kind of, you can keep it thin or thick or whatever is your personal preference. So I'd say the one thing that you wanna make sure that you're keeping in mind is that clay has a tendency to get wide at the top. Like even I did it right here. I, like, I didn't keep it as thin at the bottom as I did up at the top. I mean, it was, it was better than it looks right now, but. So you wanna make sure that you're applying, the way that you do that is you apply the more pressure from the outside. So you're almost like rolling this finger underneath that other finger to keep it steady. Because if you like, if you do what the clay wants, you're gonna just go and then you're gonna have a super wide, which is good for bowls, but not as good for cylinders and small things. So that's it in a nutshell, cylinder. I think that's it. I think that's it for this video. What do you think? What, what are your tips and tricks for throwing a cylinder? What's the tallest cylinder you've ever thrown? Leave a comment below. You know, this, I don't want this to just be, John the Potter knows everything and you learn everything from him because I don't know everything. I learn every day. I learn from you guys. I learn from the comments you share. I learn from other YouTubers. This isn't just about I know everything and you need to learn it. This is about like how do we all learn and get better together. I share what I know. I'd love if you would share what you know with me too. So comment below. I love hearing your comments. Um, I'm always willing to take criticism, advice. If you think that you can, you have some tips and tricks that work for cylinders, I would love to hear it. Please, I actually would. So, that's it for this video, guys. If you're a beginner and you wanna see, what do you struggle with? I wanna hear it in the comments below. Tell me what videos you want me to make in this uh, beginner pottery, beginner potter series. I'd love to know. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, like, comment, share, all the things. And as always, we will see you in the next video. 